Welcome to Black River RC. Today we're going to be checking out the Element Trail Runner by Associated Electronics. Uh, it's pretty good rig from first glance. Um, I just drove it from in my garage to out here. Nothing major, and uh, everything seems to be pretty decent. Maybe uh, maybe a little low on the torque side. But other than that, it seems to be pretty decent for a stock steering servo. That seems to have plenty of power. Um, maybe after our, my test, my tune will change on that. But the body styling, I really like that on it so far. Everything was simple, easy. Came with absolutely everything I needed. Battery, charger, remote. Everything that you could need to literally pull it out of the box and use it came with it. And all for right around $300. I guess you really can't complain about that. Um, so today we're going to take it out and give it a little swing. I don't have a lot of rocks to try it on right now as it is still winter. So we'll have to wait and do a rock crawling test on it. Probably this till the spring. However, we'll take it out, see how it does in the snow and the mud and in the tall grass and whatnot. And uh, just see how she does.
the weather conditions today are a little less than to be desired. It's uh, it's about 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, it's uh, spitting snow a little bit. But other than that, it's kind of nice out here. On initial impressions, the uh, with the 2S battery, this truck's definitely a little underpowered. Uh, just driving it back here. I could easily tell that it was quite underpowered. And this is my first truck with 155s. And it's definitely, these trails definitely are more centered around 19s and 22s. As I haven't had a chance this year to get the weed whacker out here and bring some of these tall weeds down. However, I figured we'd still give it a go. One thing I will say that I really like about this truck is A, how quiet it is. But I also quite like how it, how scale it is, being that it's on the 155s and not 2.2s or 1.9s like I'm used to, or even 2.6s like Bob has. It, uh, it really makes me have to pick my line a little better. This area of the trail, I know it's going to have a hard time on. Just being that it has such low ground clearance. And this is very icy snow. But, overall I have to say it's doing a pretty good job. It uh, hasn't gotten really stuck yet that one rollover that was my fault I would have to say that overall being a one uh, a class one rig it's doing very well uh, especially for running on included foams and tires general grabbers for what they are they seem to be doing fairly decent out here um, as you can probably tell it does much better when you're not driving in ruts as far as the independent front suspension goes, I think that uh, I definitely like solid axles better, you know, in my opinion. I believe that this independent front suspension has its places, um, maybe more so in the way of speed than for, you know, for top speed instead of uh, for crawling. For crawling, I don't really seem to doesn't really seem to help a whole lot. Whereas the solid axles, I don't know, they seem to articulate nicer. And I don't know, it's, to me it seems like you lose a lot of ground clearance with these. But that could also just be that I'm not used to the 155s or the class one rig. Oh, well, 
go. That's a prime example of the 155s getting hung up out here. It's kind of an unfair spot, since how a 2.9 SCX6 tire went through here yesterday. It's leaving quite a rut. But overall, it's doing very well. Of course, I say that and then I go and get stuck again. But if you're very careful and you can take a decent line and not get your diffs hung. doesn't do too bad. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, one thing I can say about these 155 tires is they really seem to hold on to the, uh, the mud. They don't clean out very good. Adding to our poor traction. I believe this truck would do much better with something on a different compound or maybe something slightly more aggressive. It's a very light truck, so I don't think it needs, I think, some heavier wheels, perhaps. Would definitely help it now this part of the trip probably not going to be too easy on it but we're going to attempt it anyways which if you saw yesterday's video you would have seen my SCX6 come through here Drag brake is almost non-existent. But, it will hold once you find it a spot. position definitely gonna take me a little getting used to this 1.55 tire and following a little nicer of a line because as you can see you slip into that and that's all she wrote there'll be uh, Coming this week, there's going to be a couple more review videos as I get some more time on some of these new rigs that I've got. We're going to see a review on the SCX6 coming up in the next couple of days. As well as, I also have a Associated Electronics Element Ecto coming that will be joining the team. And I plan on doing a review video on that for you guys. I know it's not this nor the Ecto are very new. However, I myself never had them, so I figured I would share my experience with them. As I've said, with this one already, trail runner here. I really like it. I, I get the what they were going for with the body. 
definitely has that Toyota Trail Runner vibe. Uh, sorry, Forerunner vibe. However, <laughs> from my past experience with real life Forerunners, this one doesn't seem to go quite as good. However, <laughs> I believe that's driver error, not vehicle error. And perhaps the electronics could use some upgrading. However, I am not going to complain for an RTR or ready to run, ready to replace, however you look at it. This motor and ESC combo that comes in here is the Reedy electronic stuff. Super, super underpowered. Has almost no torque. If the tires get bound up a little bit, it completely stops it. And on these 1.55 tires, it it really shouldn't, in my opinion. Um, I already have plans to get new 155 tires, which is going to be my class 1 rigs, as it is a definite challenge, as you can see. The big 2.9 tracks are not, not a friend of it. However, I think with some good tires, if we put a hobby wing in it, oh darn, darn thing keeps getting stuck. I plan on putting a hobby wing, either an 1800 kV or a 1200 kV brushless in it. Uh, the all-in-one with the FOC. It, uh, on 3S, I mean, it has plenty of pep as far as I'm concerned. Of course, it gets stuck. Bad driving. But we'll bring it over here and see how it does in the mud. Only a little bit of mud out here in Vermont today. As it is still February. We do plan on putting in some nicer trails for more scale rigs like this. Because right now, these trails are not very adapted to a trailer, uh, to a scaler like this. However, for right now, we're going to keep going. It really doesn't take much for this truck to get belly hung. That probably has something to do with the fact that I'm used to portal axles as well. I run primarily rigs with portal axles. I can't get over how quiet this truck is, but so. almost silent. Maybe that has something to do with associated self X transmission. Like I said, this is my first time ever using anything by Element. I'm rather impressed, to be honest. Well, this is a one foot uh, class one rig. If you pick your lines good and careful. It'll go just about anywhere where you want it to go. 
but you have to pick a very scale line. Something that would you'd do in real life. Alright, there was no rocks on that side of the river, so we're going to come over to this side and see what we can't find. I see a spot with a few. For those of you that have watched some of my other videos, you probably recognize this bridge. This is the bridge over the Black River. This little guy's not having the easiest time over here. As you can tell, we walk over here a lot. And... For the other crawlers, they don't normally have a problem out here. But I can already tell that this one's going to struggle a little. Unless we really pick our lines here. So we're going to try and ease our way through this the best we can. Of course, that's not going to always go as planned, because I'm telling you guys about it. <laughs> Seems like any time I pull a camera out, something goes awry. But, let's see what we can do. We'll get it down here to the river. The trail down is over here. Oh, we got stuck again. Stuck pretty good that time, actually. All right. I think today we're going to take a different path down as we've kind of... gotten stuck again. <laughs> and we've made some pretty ruddy, some pretty nasty ruts for it to try to conquer. We're going in a different route today. Let's bring her down right here. And we lost him here. That's alright. You don't need mirrors. We'll just have to glue that one on when we get home. No biggie. Oh, look at that. There's the clip. We even found the clip. That's probably the only thing that I really don't like about this truck is I don't like their securement for a lot of the body features with the pins and little clips that they use. I'm not just not a big fan of them. As you can see, I'm getting rather hung up in here because we didn't take the normal trail. Ooh, getting a little crazy there. The controller is drivable with one hand. If you've got a great big hand like me, you can just about steer one-handed. Gonna have to get a little run on that one. Ah, welcome to Vermont. It's currently raining now. It was snowing when we started, and now it's raining. So this is the normal trail down here. You guys have seen Bob come through here probably a couple times. As we do take this trail quite a lot. All right, out to the river. Now it is super icy out here, as I'm sure you can tell. It's rather icy out here. So 
we're definitely going to be a little careful today and probably not going to go too crazy on the rock oh and this is what i'm talking about this tire fell into this crack yeah we're falling into the river folks This tire here is stuck in this crack and you see it almost didn't have enough power to pull itself out. Now the battery is getting low, but it still should have had enough power to pull out of that little crack. All right, back up at the workbench. My initial thoughts were a little bit, uh, higher I guess I should say my initial expectations were a little bit higher than I would have expected it's definitely a little under power it's definitely gonna need a motor upgrade uh, the steering servo I'm still holding true on that saying that it that's a decent servo for first you know what it is if you want to go do some some hardcore rock crawling or make it go any faster you're definitely gonna need to upgrade it the independent front suspension while I'm you know it's very new to me it seems to be like a very good system I don't know that I'd like it for rock crawling whatsoever as it does seem to get hung up very easily but that could also be due to the fact that I'm so used to portals uh, overall seems like a pretty good truck uh, it's going to take a little more run time to really solidify where I'm at with it. The uh, I Like I said a little bit earlier, I really don't like how Element, at least on this truck, how all the body features like the roof rack and the mirrors and the snorkel are attached. It, as you saw on the trail, it it's very apt to lose pieces. So... To me, that's kind of a, a negative because I like to see those scale details and see them stay on the truck. But at the same time, I would be just as happy to see them fall off just like they did and not break than see them fall off or get broke off. So I can't really complain on that front. The general grabber tires that come on it, overall, they are fairly decent. Um, they're not a, a snow tire or a mud tire, and they hold on to the the dirt and the grime. They don't clean out very easily. Um, other than that, it seems like a pretty good truck. If you're looking for something around the $300 range, I can't say that I wouldn't recommend it. Um, at the same time, there is other ones out there that I think would make you want to stay in the hobby a little bit longer than per se this one would. If you're the type that likes to customize or, you know, build your trucks up or whatever, this might be the right option. Um... For me, I'm probably not going to do a whole lot to it as I plan on keeping it in the Class 1 region. Um, the only other things that I want to do, really, is add, like, inner fenders, stuff like that. Dress it up a little bit more, maybe figure out an interior, and definitely be changing out the ESC and motor, as I'm not impressed with those at all. Um... I'm kind of surprised that Reedy would even feel that that would be a an option with everything else that's on the market. But I give it a 6 out of 10. I know that's kind of a random number. However, out of what I have for vehicles, that's where I rank it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you on the next one. Please hit the like button, share, and subscribe.